start out today in Romans chapter 10, the Romans road. Scripture said, Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. There's no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the very ones that we just read. Most of us here that have accepted you as Lord and Savior, we went right down that road right there. Somebody presented it to us. We may not remember when it happened, we might not know the time, but we know that we are. We know what we have. We know we belong to you. And I thank you for that, God. Amen. So, Father, use your word to, to tell us what we need to hear today. I pray that I don't sugarcoat it. I pray I don't change it. And, God, I, I've been condemned over things in my own life. So, Father, help us to be honest with you. We love you in the name of Jesus Christ today. Amen. And amen. amen. So, <clears throat> he gives us some basic scriptures that we've heard, the Romans road. He tells us how to be saved. He lets us know thou shalt be saved. The last four words of Romans chapter 10, verse 9. He lets us know in verse 10, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, which means when you get saved, that's when you become right with God. Amen. Until you're made right with God, you are wrong with God. Does that make sense? Yeah. Amen. So you, you need Him as your Lord and Savior. He's the only one that can save you is Jesus Christ. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. When you come forward to ask Christ into your heart, we do not ask you to confess every sin that you've ever done. It's not necessary. God already knows. All you have to do is say, God, forgive me of every sin I've ever committed, and I promise you, He will forgive you. And we're going to deal with a word here called whosoever in just a minute. The Scripture says, whosoever believes on Him shall not be ashamed. Whosoever is a really strong word. Remember Saul? You remember Saul that was chained to Paul after God brought a, a shining light down into heaven and knocked him to the ground? He would put to death Christians, amen? And it, it was his duty. It was his job to see that Christians were put to death. But God saved him and changed him. Right. And then the woman at the well that had been married five times and at that very moment she was living with a man. She's a whosoever because Jesus Christ changed her. She went into her community and said, let me tell you about a man that told me everything that I've ever done. And people were saved because of her. And the man that was in the tombs cutting himself and he couldn't be around other people. He had valued his life all the way down to nothing. One contact with Jesus Christ and his life was changed. Amen. The adulterous woman that was caught in the very act of adultery and they brought it together, brought her out in the street. He said, you without sin, you'd be the first to cast a stone. Right. Amen. And Peter had a hot temper and a foot-shaped mouth. Amen. God changed him, made something out of him. In other words, you are a perfect candidate today to be saved if you are a sinner. And if you're born, you're a sinner. Amen. You're born into sin. Romans 5 8 said, But God commends his love toward us, and while we were yet, in other words, we're still sinners, Christ died for us. You cannot save yourself. You can't change yourself. Right. He commends His love for us while we were yet sinners. You see, we spend our whole life wanting to see folks straightened up. They can't get straight. They can't get right until God changes them. God saves them. God makes them new creatures. It's real simple preaching today. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. He said there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord is rich over all. They call upon Him. There is no difference in God's sight. He doesn't care whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're black, white, grew, Greek, Jew, no matter what that you are, He's the same God and He's rich unto all that call upon Him. In other words, salvation is free. It comes from a God that's so rich, so rich, that He gives salvation away. Amen? Amen? Yeah. 
you have nothing invested in it other than you asking him to come into your heart. And he said, then again, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That word whosoever, when you look it up in that passage, it means without restriction. Don't ever tell this preacher that that person that you've got on your heart and mind cannot be saved. Right. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Don't ever think anybody has passed the salvation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't ever look at them. Don't ever judge them. Acts 4.12 said there's no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved. Right. But this is not the message today. Amen? Yeah. What happens is when we become the whosoever, <coughs> when we ask Christ in the heart to save us, something changes. Look at Luke chapter 9. How many would agree today that you've been mistreated since you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because of your faith. Anybody? Because of your faith, you've been mistreated. Only two or three people? And some of y'all didn't get saved today. Come on. Anybody been mistreated on the job, at work, at home, through your family? Anybody? Now you're participating, amen? See, so you're going to get out here so much earlier. <laughs> no, I... Amen. So when we get saved, we become more like Christ than we've ever been. But look what happened to Christ in Luke 9, 22. In verse 23, the Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected of the elders and the chief priests, the scribes, and be slain and be raised the third day. Now look who all's involved in this mistreatment. Religious people. Right? Am I right? <coughs> Yeah. Elders, chief priests, yeah. scribes. Yeah. Hmm. He said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Is it almost daily that we're mistreated because of our belief? Is it almost daily? Happened pretty often, right? Pretty often. The more you act like Christ, the more you're going to be mistreated. Let me help you out with that. I'm going to tell you how it works. You surrender your heart and soul to Christ and you get yourself a job and you're on the job just not a little while. As soon as you begin to tell people how much Jesus loves you, you're going to cause problems on your job. As soon as you decide that you're going to publicly pray for somebody on the job, at school, in sports, whatever it is in your life, you're going to begin to be attacked because of your belief in Jesus Christ. Somebody should have said amen. Because that's the way it works. We have a world that absolutely <coughs> hates us. It hates believers. It hates Jesus Christ. So if you have to take up your cross daily. You get treated wrong because Jesus Christ was treated wrong. Look at your, look at your Bible real quick in Matthew 27. Matthew chapter 27. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through this real quickly. Beginning of verse 22. The crowd yelled, let him be crucified. Even the governor said, what evil has he done? In verse 23. But they cried out the more, let him be crucified. Verse 25. The people in the crowd said, his blood be on us and on our children. Now don't you all imagine that some of the people in that very crowd are some of the ones that Jesus Christ healed and touched their bodies. Right. Amen? Amen? What all has he done for you? What all has he done for me? And there's times, y'all, that we're silent. Amen. We don't take up for him. Amen? Amen. Release the rabbis unto them. And they scourged Jesus in verse 26. <clears throat> they stripped him, put on a scarlet robe in verse 28. They planted a crown of thorns like that one and shoved it down on his forehead. And I bet it wasn't very gently. They bowed, they made him bow a knee before him and they beat him across the head saying, Hail King of the Jews. They spit on him and they smote him on the head. Does anybody understand that they were not asked to do this by the governor? Right. All they were commanded to do was discourage him. They weren't commanded to spit in his face. They weren't commanded to hit him with their fists. Right. Does anybody see how evil and dark sin is? It's never enough. It's never enough. They did these things on their own, these soldiers did. 
They mocked him, put a robe on him, led him away to crucify him. They gave him vinegar mixed with gall. He didn't drink it. They crucified him. The thieves yelled at him. They reviled at him. They said, if he be king of Israel, the chief priest, listen to this, the chief priest in verse 21, this is, this is your religion again. The chief priest mocked him and the scribes and the elders said, he saved others himself. He cannot say, if he be the king of Israel, let him now come down. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he'll have him. In other words, he's not worth having. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same, in other words, in his teeth, face to face. They criticized him. So if you get mistreated, you get done wrong, then you're just following down the same pathway that your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, went through, except ours is not as bad. Amen? Yeah, amen. Ours is not as bad, but expect to be mistreated. And he uses this phrase in Luke 14, 27. Listen to this. I like this. Whosoever does not bear his cross, in other words, carry the cross, cannot be my disciple. In other words, if, if, if you tell me you've never been mistreated because of your belief, then you probably don't belong to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Or you're a silent disciple. He's that word, come after me. He wants us to come after him. He, he says... Come out, follow me, Jesus is saying. Come after me. And it, it, it talks about the, the, that phrase, actually, it, it means a, a passionate pursuit. And maybe I can take some of you back this way. Maybe you'll understand this. Maybe you'll get it this way. Anybody remember when I, when I was young, Jimmy, I know you'll know, they had a thing called high karate cologne. <laughs> huh? Huh? I could smell like a goat and hadn't had a bath in three days. But I could put on some high karate and I was after a girlfriend. Amen? Amen? I didn't want to take baths. All I had to do splash that stuff on. Amen? There was high karate. I wrote them down here. What was that one I wrote down? Old Spice. But that sounds too old, so I wasn't into Old Spice. But then they came up with an awesome attractant. Brute. <laughs> Amen. When you were a young boy, you wanted to feel like a brute. I got brute sprayed on me. You could smell it. You couldn't smell anything else in the house. And but in order for it to take effect, where I grew up, because both my parents smoked like a freight train. Amen. And I'm not kicking on smokers, but I didn't want to smell like that. And so I, if I stayed on that with somebody else, when I put brute or anything on, I kind of overdid it. Amen. But I, I, I would, I mean, that's what we do. God put it naturally in us to passionately seek after something that you want. And it should be Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Passionately. If you ever watch the movie, The Passion of the Christ, that's what that means. He was passionate about what he did. He did what he did out of love for us. Out of his infatuation for us. For God so loved the world. Amen. So loved. That's an infatuation. Amen. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So it's a it's an attraction that nothing else can compare with. Now 1 Peter chapter 1, go there. 1 Peter the apostle here, in the New Living in, in verses 1 and 2, says this, this way. He said, I'm writing to God's chosen people who living as foreigners in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. See, God the Father chose you long ago, and the Spirit has made you holy. You have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you're cleansed by His blood. 1 Peter chapter 3, we begin at verse 8. He's speaking to the believers. He calls them brethren in verse 8. Finally, be you all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, which means show sympathy, be courteous. We can never be of one mind until we know what the mind that Christ is. He wants us to have His mind. You will not get His mind by somebody's opinion you won't get his mind by watching Dr. Phil. You won't get his mind by 
Facebook. You won't get his mind by anything except through the Word of God. If you want to know what the mind of Christ is, right here is how you find it. Amen? Amen. And if you're not reading this, you don't know the mind of Christ. Yeah. We need to know that he's telling them, the people that are believers, you need to have the same mind. He said, having compassion one of another, love as brethren. There should be. There should be a love when you come into this place that's greater than all the world that you can find on the outside. This is where body of believers meet together to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God help us if we have things that cause us to be divided and be mad and upset at each other that we can't even worship together. Amen. God help us. Right. If we're in that state, we need to ask forgiveness of God Amen. and to go to that person you have trouble with and make it right with them. Do not compromise what God is doing Amen. just because of our attitudes. We've got to show compassion. Be courteous. And then he says, not rendering evil for evil. Did you know how much that goes against our nation? It goes against our nature. Weren't you taught when you were little? When he hits you, you hit him back. Amen. We're good at that, ain't we? Amen. I can't wrap my mind around the love of Jesus Christ. And what they did to him, he never struck back. And everything they said to him, he never said something back in hate or anger. I got a long way to go, y'all, to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Don't you? Yep. It's taught, it's taught in us to defend ourselves immediately. Or railing for railing, which means, in other words, if you can't find any other way, at least you can tell them what you think. Out of your trap. Amen. I can't whoop you, but I can sure call you something. Amen. How good does that go over with God? Think about what his son did. What he endured. Never. Mm -mm. Remember, he only asked one question one time. The word why. And they blindfolded him. And they were putting him everything. Remember that? So why do you why did you hit me? Every time I read that, I want to weep. Not railing for railing, but contrarywise a blessing, knowing that there are two called. You should inherit a blessing. In other words, you're going to get blessed if we can keep our trap shut <laughs> and not attack everybody that attacks us. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil, which means let him turn away from evil. We're supposed to turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. That means those that are right with God. His ears are open to their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. If you want to wonder why that your prayer life's not getting an answer that you want, he just told you right then. Verse 13 of 1 Peter 3. Who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? But and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are you, and be not afraid of their terror. You suffer for righteousness' sake. How about Joseph in Genesis, book of Genesis, especially chapter 39, when he finally had been sent away, had been in trouble, and finally gets hired there at Potiphar's, Potiphar's house, Potiphar's mansion. And his wife comes after him, and Joseph rejects her. What happens to him? He gets thrown into prison. He gets punished for doing what's right. And in Daniel chapter 6, look at Daniel. It said the presidents, the governors, the princes, the counselors, and the captains ordered him and put out a decree for over all the land. Nobody's allowed to pray for 30 days. The Bible says Daniel woke up and went right about his prayer life just as normal. Amen. What happened to him? He get, he get thrown into a den of lions. Both those men came out better than when they went in. Amen. Because of God. 
Don't you be shocked at the attacks that you're receiving from you and your family. I'm going to make this point today, and I hope, I hope that you get it. <coughs> Satan hates who you love the most. Amen. <coughs> Satan hates who you love the most. If he can't have your soul, he will attack your family. He'll attack your daughter. He'll attack your son. He'll attack your grandchildren. He'll attack your husband, your wife, your friends. If he can't have your soul, he's going to attack those that you're closest to because he knows that how he can hurt you the most. Yeah. And I'm telling the truth about that. You know I am. Amen. He's your adversary. He's your adversary. He hates you. He hates those that you love. Don't be shocked when it happens to you. Amen? Don't be shocked. When God places you in a place, whether it's your job or in sports or in life in general, people are going to be upset because of the fact that you are a believer in Jesus Christ. Now listen to what Ephesians 5, 11 says. Have no fellowship with the works of unfaithful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Here's the way it's going to happen a lot of times. Hey man, let's go out. Let's go out and have us a beer right after work. Uh, I don't drink. I won't be going with y'all. Uh, you're judging us. Am I right? You're judging us. You're telling me that you're better than us. Well, let's go to this party or let's go here or let's go there. You're judging us. You see, when you stand for what's right, get ready to be criticized. Get ready to be picked on. Get ready to be scooted out to the side. It's going to happen to you if you're living for Christ. If you're not, then you just blend in with the lost folks. Amen? I know we get quiet today, and that's okay. This sermon's for your pastor, too. Verse 15. But sanctify the Lord in your hearts. That means set, set Him apart. There ought to be a place in your heart and in your life that you put Jesus Christ, and you're not going to let anything affect that relationship. He said He sanctified you when He saved you. Now He's saying, look, you need to set a place in your heart that this is what the Lord wants me to do and that's what I'm going to obey. Yeah. No matter what happens to you. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you for a reason of the hope in you with meekness and fear. Are you always ready? Are you always ready when somebody says, hey man, where are you? why is it that you see things the way you do? Who are you putting your hope in? How many here can take the Word of God and go to a place and show them, this is where I get my hope at. This is where I get my peace at. Amen. Or do you just give them your opinion? Amen? Yep. He said, always be ready to give a reason. My reason is I can take them right in here and you ought to be able to. And some of you can be always ready to give an answer to every man that asks you for the reason of hope. My hope is in Jesus Christ. Amen. This tells them all about Jesus Christ. Yeah. They get enough opinions, amen? They get enough education to get all these things. He said, always be ready to do that. And guess what? They don't have to look like you and act like me and you. Amen? Yeah. We're so bad about judging people, you all. Who's the righteous judge anyway? Christ is. We judge by the outward appearance, don't we? Mm -hmm. Amen? Right off the bat. Yeah. We judge by outward appearance. Good thing Jesus didn't. Amen. Yeah. He saw my outward and my inward. Mm -hmm. yeah. He said, I love you anyway. Amen. I love you anyway. And he loves us. You know what? He loves us even as we judge other people. He still loves us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Did you know that pretty much this church would be empty today if it was left up to our judgment? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. We know way too much about each other already. Mm -hmm. Amen. I don't know about her. I don't know about him. I don't know. 
And he said, come unto me, all of you. That labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Amen. All of you. Do y'all realize that the church has worked harder at running people off than it has welcoming them with open doors and open hearts? The church has done that. Did y'all know that? Yeah. Did you know also you can have an open door but not have open hearts? We say they're welcome here. Then we find out what an absolute mess that they are. He loves your mess. Amen. He loves you. Yeah. There's nothing you can do to keep him from loving you. The Bible said there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Amen. People ought to know that. We better be telling them. Yeah. We better be the ones to tell them. Oh my. A reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Did, did anybody get how that reads? They asked you for the reason. They didn't like your shoving salvation down their throat. They asked you. And they asked me. That's somebody said, hey man, tell me about Jesus Christ. Tell me how you got saved. Tell me why is it that you have a peace that we don't have. We have a peace that passes all understanding, y'all. Amen. Verse 16, having a good conscience. What does that mean? You're the one that knows whether you did right or not and you're being mistreated for it. Having a good conscience. That as they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed and falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. If you're saved and you've been born again, you can know that you know in your mind about a situation that you're being accused about. You know if you've done right or not. Only you know that. Amen. But he said, your good conversation, in other words, your lifestyle, what that means, is going to show who you really are. Verse 17 said, For it's better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Huh. Listen to what 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2 says, Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You know, I visited an inmate one time. You know, he was not upset over his crime that put him there. You know what, what he was so upset about? Was that he ratted on another inmate. Chew on that for a second. He wasn't sorry for his crime. His conscience had been seared. He wasn't sorry for what he did. He wasn't sorry that he'd hurt somebody, robbed him, beat him up. He was sorry that he had ratted on a fellow inmate. There's something about that isn't right, is it, y'all? Yep. Amen? Amen. That's having your conscience seared where you're sensitive to one thing but not sensitive at all to the other. In 2 Timothy 3, 1 and 2, it said, Know this also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Yea, and here it is for us. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Hmm. Verse 18 of 1 Peter 3. For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. When somebody attacks, when somebody attacks, my son or my daughter, I'm telling you what, it hurts me. It hurts me to no end. It should hurt you. Amen. If somebody attacks your child, it should upset you. Yeah. It can be a teacher, it can be a worker, it can be a friend, but I'm telling you what, that is your child. We ought to be ready to fight for them. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I'm not talking about physically. This is where the message is at maybe today. I don't, I don't really know. 
We spend so much time fighting back in the flesh, and the Bible tells us we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of this dark age. Amen. I'm going to tell you what, there's a satanic force that's around that wants to attack your children, wants to attack you, your parents, your mom, your dad, your best friends. Yeah. And we want to talk about it, we want to fuss about it, but the best way to fight is spiritually, and that's on your knees, saying, God, that's my boy. That's my boy that just went through all this. God, I'm asking you. I'm asking you, God. I, I, I don't know how to defend it. I'm asking you to defend my child. I'm asking you to defend my mom, my sister, my brother in Christ. We, we don't fight on our knees like we should, y'all. Yeah, does anybody here believe that if you bend your knees and talk to God, that he'll listen to you? Amen. 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 Why do we, why do we fight the other way, y'all? I'm going to tell you something. I'm so proud to be married to the woman that I'm married to. I told her, I said, I'm going to miss you when I'm not with you today. My wife is a prayer woman. Mm -hmm. Things that I want to find physically, she hits her knees. She hits her knees. She's no better than any of the rest of you, but I know how she fights. She fights on her knees. And that soft voice that she has after she comes up after prayer time for more than, I don't know how long it was up. I'm telling you what. There ain't no way that I would ever want to be married to another woman except that one right there. If God takes her, I'll be the most broken heart. Man, it is what Man. And when she gets attacked because of her faith, it breaks my heart. Amen. It ought to break your today that your family's being attacked, that your children are being attacked, that your friends are being attacked. This church is continually attacked. Amen. Y'all don't know it, but I do. We're being under attack continually. Satan hates what God is doing here. Amen. Amen. And we want to fight it the wrong way. We need to fight on our knees, y'all. I don't know what your need is today, but I do know if you've never been saved, you've never truly asked Christ in your heart, you need to come forward on the first note. Say, Brother Mike, I, I know that I'm not saved. I know that I need to be born again. And let, let me help you with this. And that's the city. Satan wants to kill you before you get saved. Amen. Anybody get that? Yep. Satan wants to kill you before you get saved. Because then you'll spend a turn to hell with him. And then he wants to make your life miserable after you're saved. So if you're not saved, don't wait any longer. Why would you put off the very thing that God sent his son this earth to do? If you've got some problems, you've got some family issues, you've got, you've got your family's under attack, your children, your wife, your husband, your friends, the best place to fight is right there. Amen. Yep. Well, you're just trying to get me to come forward. No, I'm just trying to get you to listen to what the Spirit of God is telling you to do. Right. If He's telling you to do that, then you don't miss out by praying for somebody you love. Amen? Right. We're trying to fight it the other way. You come, do whatever God tells you to do today. I'll preach exactly what God told me to preach. I have a piece about it, and I'm asking through the shed blood of Jesus Christ that every, every satanic influence, every interruption that Satan will bring about be pushed back. He's a liar, murder, and a thief. He wants to destroy our family. We will not listen to him, and he is not welcome here today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Do what God tells you to do today. If you need to come pray, come. If you want to make this your church home, come. Yeah. We promise not to judge you. Amen. Yeah.